Welcome back to Doom. We finished a uh, arena, so we're going to, I believe, try to find a train so we can go meet Samuel in person. Well, in person, quote unquote, because he's basically a mind and a robot. <laughs> oh, it's almost like it's in person. Why uh, can't I meet him in robot? <laughs> Why can I never shoot those things down and just take the weapon upgrades? Because they have plot armor. They made a doom-proof glass. Oh, like the same stuff that Who's Its Face was hiding behind. Cool. Olivia, yeah. Yeah. Because there's no reason why you shouldn't, why in those earlier scenes you shouldn't be able to walk to the door and stop her. Like at all. Other than Doom Guy knows that that will stop the game earlier. And then he won't be able to kill as many demons. I guess. <laughs> so, Doom Guy is actually unethical. Who'd have thunk? <laughs> Who could have possibly guessed? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it went Translation, from... watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went from red to blue. So, like, there's this whole science-y explanation thing that goes into these into these battle brawl arena things. The the, the big gore nests. Yeah, the, the nests that that you that you rip the hearts out of to to start these sections, but like. There's no explanation for why you hear that scream sound effect when you do. It's just something that happens. Uh, well, you're ripping that thing's heart out of its chest, and it hurts really, really bad, so it screams. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, uh, a lot of ripping and a no lot of mouth, tearing. And that doesn't stop it from screaming. It well, it has that no mouth, and it must screaming. scream. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it stopped that guy from screaming in that game, so why doesn't it stop Hello, this Baron Von Hell. Oh, fuck these things. Ow, that... Yeah, wait till the end game where we get, like, three of them at once. A uh, how? Yeah, I think that was pretty much, like, the final boss of the first episode of Doom was, like, two of those things. Two of those fuckers coming at you at once. Um, how often is the game introduced, keep introducing new enemies? Because... Like there was... We're at the point where it's basically not introducing anything anymore. Yeah, okay, but we're only like halfway through the game at this point. We're a little, we're over, we're a little over halfway. Yeah, now it's a matter of the game just throwing different kind of combinations at you. Yeah, around the midpoint of the game, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't introduce much in the way of new enemies or weapons. At this point, it's a, it's mostly about finding those upgrades and seeing what kind of mileage you can get out of your existing arsenal. I noticed you got the BFG down there. Nope, not yet. Nope, that's not, not the yet. BFG. That's that's the that's the Gauss cannon. We'll get the BFG in soon. Hmm. You're right. BFG is, as always, your screen nuke. Huh. I thought that was the BFG. Okay. Nope. It's not big enough. <laughs> that's not big enough. Okay. Nope. So I guess the noisy cricket would be the small, F, the small fucking gun? I guess. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, I need to watch Men in Black again sometime, some, one of these days. I think they're rebooting that. Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me, considering that Men in Black 3 kind of tanked, I guess. So, I mean, Men in Black 2 isn't very good either. So. Was Men in Black based on something like a book or anything? Comic book. Yeah, yeah it was based it was on a comic, off book, a comic yeah. book. Yeah. I've never seen whatever the source material is. All I know is that the movie... The original one. Well, the was... animated series was actually really good. Yeah, it, it was? was okay. I never watched. Well, I it. liked it, but okay. Uh, it was it was like your standard '90s uh, animated series uh, addendum to a movie, where uh, the cast of the movie is there, and they. But take... they're not they're not played by anyone who was actually in the movie. Yeah, and they they take like uh, the one. A uh, female character who barely did anything in the movie and have her like, be super prominent because that was a thing in the 90s that was always happening uh, for some reason. Didn't cartoon Will Smith give birth to an alien in that series? Uh, Probably. I might have missed that episode. <laughs> <laughs> he probably greets every baby he has to deliver or do anything with. Welcome to Earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in any case, the only thing I really remember about it is the 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 the, uh, the woman who was at, at the hospital and apparently became a one a member of the Men in Black, but then vanished at the beginning of the second movie, was like um, one of the main characters in the cartoon. So she has that, 
She has the cartoon. I think the cartoon was made after the first movie. Yes, it was. So, well, after, it always maybe because the first movie did well. Well, after the first, movie, it always well, felt I'm really dumb to me that they dropped bad. that character at the uh, at the beginning of the second movie, since like she's supposed to be. It's uh, Will Smith is Jay, right? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. K it, is it, it, K it, is okay. I get what they Tommy were going Jones, for, yeah. but it, it comes off really lame when you realize like she's barely been a man uh, 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 a man in black for like. I don't know, l less time than than Jay. Yet she still has that si that 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 the problem that 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 K was was worried about, where like he he's just tired of what he's doing and wants to go back to a normal life. Although it might have something to do with Jay neuralizing her without 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 um without asking. That that was a thing that apparently he had he had going. It's just like you can't neuralize your partners, man. Stop doing that. Why did they neuralize her though at the beginning? Because they too? couldn't get the actress, I suppose. Uh, no, but I mean, what was the end story reason? <laughs> oh no! Like, don't they neuralize uh, everybody who leaves the uh, thing? Who J leaves the yeah, MID? yeah, that's that's the thing. But uh, Jay Will Smith was was doing this thing where he neuralized his partners because he decided, apparently without asking them, that uh, <laughs> that that they weren't cut out for it, and he wanted to to send them back to their normal lives. So she went back to the to the morgue. I forget what her letter designation was, and it doesn't really matter. I don't remember her actual name either. I don't remember any of the characters' <laughs> actual names. Well, uh, maybe you've been neuralized. Men in black, <laughs> but uh, I don't remember what what her letter was either. Um, M, maybe. No, no, Agent M was Michael Jackson. What? I thought Michael Jackson was one of the aliens. Yeah, yeah, but in Men in Black too, like he was, he he's helping the Men in Black with the uh, intel and all that. I forgot. But uh, this was apparently the character Rip Torn plays wouldn't let him become an agent, and he even wanted to be agent. I forgot that that that, that these um that, that that these movies took place at a time when Michael Jackson cameos were considered something polite society would would accept. Really? Because it was kind of <laughs> it was the like early two thousands. Early two thousands. It was already. It's, it was more yeah. of a haha. Look, Michael Jackson's an alien. Isn't that funny? Kind of isn't that isn't that <laughs> oh, weird? Yeah, it's it's just like I remember like around that time, there was uh, the scandals and stuff involving Michael Jackson, and suddenly he became a lot yeah. less fashionable. And yeah, it's, I, I, I forgot <laughs> that Men in Black predated that. If you want to watch something that's not really comfortable to watch anymore, there's the SV there's the Law and Order SVU episode where not Michael Jackson is like inviting young kids to his weird. Peter Pan parties and like raping them and things like that and it's just like yeah this is not comfortable to watch anymore now that he's dead <laughs> slash has been kind of that's been proven to be false so it's just like yeah I mean granted Law and Order SVU is junk food crap television that I love but <laughs> it still is <laughs> junk food crap television so I mean granted like if you've seen their Gamergate episode oh my god that's oh yeah, so the one where, I, yeah, the one where, so. where Ice-T is trying to speak gamer lingo and failing miserably. <laughs> and you want to know what's hilarious is that Logan Paul is the bad guy in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Just like in real life. But up, so, but up. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember hearing about that like on every social network that I'm on when it first came out. It's like everyone in every camp had something bad to say about that episode. That's how you know you've hit the jackpot. No one likes it. No. Not the people <laughs> not the people who agree with the message that your episode has. Not even they like it. <laughs> Just like Jesus fucking Christ, how did you fuck up so badly? By not uh, doing any research whatsoever and just doing what you think your nephews say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, how do you know? You, do? you know, kids. you know, they had something wrong when they had '90s lingo Richard Nixon dressed up in street attire. It was like uh, wrong kind of gay guys. But like, <laughs> it, it, it was so dazzling. Normally, like when these kind of when these kind of like preachy episodes or movies happen, you can usually count on someone who already agrees with it to to, to sort of like it. But I, I didn't see any of that with this episode. It was like everyone could tell it was written badly and badly executed and badly. I think a huge Everything. part of it also has to do with the fact that they didn't ask any of the uh, people directly involved for, like, permission or talk to them at all or anything like that. But at this point, I'm mostly just trying to remember stuff that happened. So, this is, like, four, three years old now, because, damn, 
I hate the so world like, we live in. But. So like, uh, <laughs> it, it, Samuel, whatever his face is, uh, is he like one of the Bionicles? Is he from Mononui? Is, is, is that a thing that he is? He, he, might, he I mean, he looks like it, so why not? <laughs> Someone probably is already screaming at me, they're not called Bionicles! <laughs> or something like that. I forget what they're called. Uh, it, it was some kind of f- uh, fancy f- foreign sounding word that's probably a gibberish mix of things that don't mean anything but uh yeah i remember the bionicles the bionicle things those super 90s you see the the funny thing is is that you mentioned bionicle like that was something i liked the first bionicles that came out but apparently the bionicle lore is really 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 deep and if you talk (laughs) to the right people about it they can go on for actual hours talking about these things and I just, yeah. it all sounds like gibberish to me. I'm They're sorry. fucking Legos. <laughs> I uh, mean, granted, they... you could say the same thing about some of the stuff we liked when we were eight years old, too. So I'm not going to give them crap about, you can like what you like. It's just, I'm not going to understand it. I kind of I kind of, and... I kind of got to give them props for the Bionicles thing, because not only did they make, like, a good Lego line thing, but they also made, like, a show that was so like simplistic in its visual design that it actually kind of worked with bad 90 cg so kind of like reboot which they're actually rebooting <laughs> i was about to mention on myself and did you just see that fucking trailer? i have not yeah. how bad is it how bad is it it's very bad <laughs> <laughs> it's about people going into games now instead of it being about the games themselves oh so it's code lyoko basically and it yes. looks like <laughs> Every generic Power Ranger it, rebuff. No, no, it's got to be Johnny Quest. The real adventures of Johnny Quest. Johnny the Quest. Yeah, Quest adventures Vision. Of Johnny Quest. Uh, so, like, well, the other one's fake? Uh, yeah, was this, did the 60s just never happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Was it a pipe dream? I mean, there were a lot of drugs in the 60s, to be fair, but... Like, with Shaggy around? <laughs> The, the only one where, like, the real adventures ever, for a TV show ever makes sense was, I think, Ghostbusters, because there was an actual... Yeah, Ghost- America Team guy. <laughs> there was an actual Ghost... There was a TV show before the Ghostbusters movie come out. Uh, Called came- Ghostbusters. Yeah, and so uh, they couldn't name their new show just Ghostbusters, so they had to name it The Real Ghostbusters instead. <laughs> so you didn't so people get would know it's the actual Ghostbusters brand. <laughs> The real <laughs> Ghostbusters was like the 90s as fuck one where everyone was a, was a completely original character that had some sort of cool edge to them. No, I think yeah. they still had they still had the like Egon Ray, Winston and Venkman, but like they had But they all didn't new look ghosts. they didn't look Yeah, they didn't look very similar to The character designs were also a little different. Egon I think was the most obvious. He doesn't look as different. nerdy. Uh, oddly enough. Well, no, and his, his, also, his hair was also yellow, and <laughs> it's kind of outlandish. So. Ah, uh, man. You ever get a time? Look at the um, look at the animated pilot of the real Ghostbusters, and it's actually beautifully animated if you ever get a chance to look at it. Oh, you see, it's, it, it's weird. Pilots tend to be better animated than the actual show themselves because you're trying to well, sell because, the show. Yeah, because yeah, they're pitch videos at the end of the so day. Like, yeah. As we talk about this random 90s crap, while Doom Guy is running around shooting demons, I'm imagining. Well, I was first imagining that Doom Guy was listening to us in a podcast because it's like the most unfitting thing for him to be doing, listening to a bunch of nerds talking about '90s crap. But then I started. He has, a, to imagine, he has, a, he has an audio book. But then I started to imagine that we were voices in his head, and this is like his, his his dementia, his psychosis, his his whatever you would call voices in the head that talk about video games while you're murder killing demons. And then yeah. I asked the true existential question which is the hallucination the voices in his head talking about 90s crap or the demons he's killing i was gonna say i think he kind of you noticed how his uh his shoot to kill ratio increased when we brought up gamer game <laughs> <laughs> you see here's the thing that i'm wondering though what would the doom 90s t- kid tv show look like because they've actually done that with more they did Kombat. robocop and they did that with robocop mortal Kombat got a cheesy 90s kid friendly tv show so Doom could definitely have it. Well, like, it would probably. Oh, have you, oh, Ted, have you ever seen Saturday Morning Watchmen? Uh, oh yeah. Well, bring in <laughs> yeah. the watch. <laughs> well, you know, it would, it would probably look just like the video games promotional art, to be honest, because the promotional art itself was already edgy as hell. It was like basically made to look like a metal album. Um, well, it was made by a comic book artist, so yeah, it, it, it was made to look like a metal album. That was the feel they were going for with it, with it, with the old Doom. A games. Doom. 
a Saturday morning cartoon with like the same sort of intricacies of G.I. Joe. <laughs> Doom guy shoots yeah. the demons, shoots them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I tell you what, though, he would have a Batman chin. That's what he would look like. He would have the Batman chin. <laughs> that yeah, that protrudes out of the helmet. <laughs> I mean, like uh, uh, Blaskowitz or whatever his name is from the original. AJ Blaskowitz. Yeah, him. He has that chin in game already, and I'm pretty sure. Like, oh yeah, there would have to be like a special season-ending crossover between that and Wolfenstein, where VJ shows up. Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, he still has that chin too. I'm like, he's the super realistic version of him that you can see in the modern Wolfenstein. Einstein games probably has that chin. Oh yeah, he still he still has a huge chin. It's not like Crimson Chin or Batman the Animated Series <laughs> huge, but he still has a very big chin. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's 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 interesting to see that kind of design in in, in like a live action type art style. So, yeah. Would Doom Guy take off the helmet at any point in the show? No, because then they'd have to animate his face. Well, I mean, in if it was if it was '90s Doom, you'd still be able to see his face underneath the helmet. So. Yeah, but not his mouth, so that they don't only have to animate the eyes. They, these these shows did not get a budget at all. <laughs> so they'd be very, very happy that, oh, good, our main character doesn't need to have his mouth animated. Good, that's we can fire three interns just off of that. Bye, Jimmy. 